Hello. In this lecture we will be talking about the manipulation of composite restorations, both for anterior and posterior teeth. We'll start off by with the class 3 composite restorations. Before talking about the manipulation of the composite, it's important to note that composite restorations for class 3 anterior cavities should start from the lingual or palatal axis as shown in this diagram and it is as much as possible required to minimize the cavity preparation not to include unnecessary removal of tooth structure. The cavity would look something like this. This lined area represents the beveled enamel ready to be etched then bonded. Before applying any etchant or bonding a celluloid strip is placed calcium hydroxide protective layer for the pulp is placed glass inomer cement may be placed for additional support glass inomer cement here will aid in the etching process as the glass inomer cement will be after etching will be pitted or irregular therefore aid in the mechanical attachment of the restoration to the cavity here is the final cavity as you can see the beveling rounded cable surface line angles they shouldn't be very sharp in order not to produce stress straight concentration areas and they may fracture at these points because the thickness of the anterior teeth is minimal hence the remnant of tooth structure after cavity preparation is very minimal maybe even less than one millimeter and then thereby may fracture if stress concentration areas were present in the cavity pulpal protection is a must because we are going to use an acid etchant which may hit the cave the Lie, uh, the pulpal floor or axial wall in this case and the acid will reach the pulp causing pulpal damage this is the case in which we include this area with the enamel etchant it is very important to know that the etching should be constricted only to the enamel which is going to be bonded which is the cavo surface as you can see here the cavo surface line angle which is the beveled area etchant may we may increase it a little bit further a little bit which is no more than one or half a millimeter Beyond that, there's, it's unnecessary etching. But while apply, then we uh, wait for about 30 to 60 seconds for the enamel etchant. Wash it thoroughly for about 30 seconds. Then with gentle air drying for about 5 seconds we should see that these etchant areas should have a chalky white 
appearance. If not, we should re-etch the margins for about 15 seconds, then wash it for 30 seconds and dry it for about 5 seconds in order to have the chalky white appearance of the enamel. Dryness for the cavity should not exceed more than 5 seconds because if so the excessive dryness will lead to the collapse of the collagen fibers and collapse of the prisms, enamel prisms therefore we will lose the tags necessary for the bonding. Afterwards, after the bonding, sorry, going back to the same slide, after that we apply the bonding to the area of the etchant. We, we could also apply it a little bit further, just in case errors happened in etching. Then we light cure it with our light cure device. Afterwards, we place the composite as seen here, adapt it thoroughly there, so there is, there is no or oh, there are no uh, open margins. We use our fingers to pull the celluloid strip as you can see here you know, before applying the light cure, the light curing, this is used in order to pull all the composite inside the cavity. Hence, pulling all the fillers which is present inside the composite cavity and letting some of the matrix, which is the uh, fluid of the composite, uh, be resurfaced on the surface of the filling hence giving the filling a very glossy and smooth appearance then we light cure it with our light cure device the light cure device may be a halogen light if it is a halogen light it should be light cured for about 40 to uh, 60 seconds if it is the lead type it could be used for about 10 seconds this is the f then we can use the light cure device to go from the palatal aspect because we cured the buccal aspect only now we could use it to uh, cure the palatal aspect of the filling as you could see here. After that we bring a sharp instrument which is a blade for instance and cut away any or scrape away any excess light cure material then by using polishing burrs special polishing burrs or polishing discs as in this slide okay to remove any excess and to smoothen out the cavity that we have uh, the composite filling that we've done now talking about the class 5 cavity preparation class 4 cavity preparation for restora uh, uh, composite restorations here the case is much similar to the class 3 cavity but there's a slight difference which is usually the cavity is a lot larger so we use the same celluloid strip apply the etchant light cure the area but after bonding and light curing we will be faced by we can't put all the filling material as we done in the small class 3 cavities so 
we have to use layering techniques. Layering technique is a technique in which we use a minimal amount of composite and put it like as seen here. We put it a little bit over here, we cure it, we build up another area, we cure it, and so on and so on until we reach the final shape of the cavity. After reaching the final shape, we smoothen it, polish it, and the cavity will be final. Here's a diagram showing us even in class 3's, there's a small class 3 in which we use only one layer in which we put the, cav uh, the restoration or the filling material and we cure it as seen in the previous slides. But if we have a very large cavity, we cannot do this for many purposes. Purpose number one is we cannot ensure proper adaptation of the composite filling through all this large cavity. There sometimes may be voids over here, here because of the lack of condensation pressure at these areas. So we use one small increment, we light cure it, we put another sorry, we put another small increment, light cure it, then we use the other or the final increment. Another purpose why we shouldn't use it all in one uh, one step is because of the polymerization shrinkage. The polymerization shrinkage, the more the composite or the larger the composite filling, the more the shrinkage will be. Composite normally shrinks, but the amount of shrinkage of this small cavity will be minimal. But if all this material was put in one step, the amount of shrinkage would be a lot more than this cavity. Hence, we will may end up with gaps between the composite filling and the wall of the cavity. And then these gaps will enable some food and bacteria to penetrate and cause secondary caries under the filling. 